texting while driving and giving her a ticket. It just might have saved her life. It's hit cancel. There's that. Oh. I just, I'm receiving. There you go. Now hit escape. On the keyboard. Oh, On the keyboard. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm not very good with electronics. So what I'm going to be talking to you about today is the smartphone crisis. In the video that you guys just watched, that's how fast your life can be taken in the blink of an eye. I want to talk to you guys about today how dangerous texting and driving can be. I also want to talk to you guys about how smartphones can cause people to do poorly in school because they are on them too much. And I also want to talk about how smartphones can cause anxiety, depression, and also lead to loneliness because they don't get that one-on-one -on -one that they need with family and friends. The dangers of texting and driving. What does your life mean to you? Is your life worth that one text you sent? Or maybe that one text you looked at? Maybe that call you took or that call you sent? To me, that just seems ludicrous. Why would you put your life on the line to answer three-letter text, hey, or send, hey? Pull over on the side of the road. Your life is not worth dying over that. Those people you just saw in the video, that could be you, that could be me, that could possibly be the person sitting right next to you, maybe across the room, you never know. The National Safety reports that cell phone use while driving leads to 1.6 million car crashes a year. Nearly 390,000 injuries occur each year from car accidents caused by texting while driving. One out of every four car accidents in the United States is caused by texting and driving. And in 2018, nearly 1.25 um, 1.25 million people died in road crashes. Over, on average, 3,287 deaths happen day day. And an additional 20 to 50 million are injured or disabled. More than half of all road deaths happen among the ages of 15 to 44 years old. What can happen to you when you are texting and driving? You could injure yourself, you could injure others, you could kill other drivers, and sadly, you could kill yourself. I can't stress this enough that when you're driving, you have to pay attention because not only are you putting your own life at risk, but how crappy would you feel knowing that you lived, which would obviously be wonderful because everybody's important, but how terrible would you feel knowing that you were that driver that took away somebody's life because you wanted to be on your phone? You have to live with that the rest of your life, and it's not worth it. So the next thing I would like to talk to you guys about is, oh, actually, here are some pictures from people who have been texting and driving. That one is a lady who's texting, and people are walking out front. That one was one of the accidents from somebody um, driving. And then there's another one, somebody got hit head on. 
Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is how being how being on your smartphone can cause you to do poorly in school. First off, it can cause your grades to drop dramatically. And you will not be engaged in what is going on. You will not be allowed to participate in school activities. Some people could even drop out of school because they don't want to learn. This could affect where you attend college. And I think the biggest outcome from this is that it could affect your job opportunities because whether you go to college or not after you attend high school, you need to pay attention in high school and understand what they're teaching you because yeah, some, some people think it's not that big of a deal, but honestly it is because what they're teaching you is life skills that you're gonna take in the outside world because when we leave here from Fort Scott, we're gonna be on our own. Whether you go to another college or not, you're gonna to need to know what you've learned. Your education is very important and not no device should take that away from you. It's not worth it. Ways to help smartphone problems at school. I think if schools were to limit the amount of time children or teens were on their smartphones, it would help. It's instead of them just taking them away because that would not make them want to pay attention. It would just make them want to do it even more. And so I think that would defeat the purpose of people wanting to go to school. talk to you guys about is how smartphones can cause anxiety, depression, and take away time from family and friends. People start to seclude themselves when they're on their smartphones too much because they'll lay in their room at night or if they're just bored they'll be on their phones. They don't they don't get that one-on-one -on -one time that they need with other people. They start to feel lonely People can also post rude things on social media to make other people sad. You are constantly waiting for new feeds to pop up, which can make you anxious. Why is it important to spend, to spend time with others instead of just on your smartphones? All right, so the last slide I show you, this goes along with it. As humans, we depend on that interaction with other people, so we need that physical touch. And by being on our smartphones too much, we're not getting that. It helps by being able to interact with someone, just being able to talk, or maybe giving someone that hug that they needed. It helps improve health when you are feeling subjectively, you're feeling reassured, you also reduce blood pressure, your um, pulse goes down, and you are calm, and you make your body calm, which puts less stress on your heart. To me, this topic like just seems like a really big deal because I feel like people should not be on their phones as much, especially when we're in a classroom setting because it's not only disrespectful, but what, what's the point of coming to college for real, honestly, if you're not gonna pay attention? Why waste your money? Why waste his time, you know? So pay attention. Okay, these are pictures of people sad because they're on the phones too much. <laughs> okay, my sources, myself, um, James Twinge, which I have been actually, I've used her article a lot because I'm writing about this topic in English and she's really good. And then um, the help guide, I got that too with some cool stuff. All right, in my conclusion. What I'm trying to tell you guys is I don't think smartphones are a bad thing, and I don't want you to think they're a bad thing because there's not. They're not. You can do so many things with 
all the new technologies that are coming out. I just think we need to know when it is a good time to use them and when it is not. I feel like if we change the amount of time that we were on our phones, it would save not only our lives, but it would make people it would make people do better in school and it would make people be able to spend more quality time with their friends and family that they need. One device should not take over your entire life. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions at this time, I would be more than happy to answer them. All right. <clears throat>